Before we move on to the third and fourth sections of this excerpt, I can't help but uh, linger on this discussion of Martians in the latter part of section two. I'm a sucker for any science fiction scenario, and I actually find them quite helpful. And I agree with his assessment here. Um, not that I, I'm saying it that with, with his particular uh, way of answering it, but w- with the options that he sets up, uh, that he is in, in this notion of, well, what if we, um, what, what if we uh, contacted a, uh, an alien species and al- aliens came down, you know? And I think that what he says uh, about the way that Kant would handle such a thing, and we'll read Kant later in the semester very carefully, uh, is, is correct. <clears throat> that is, if, if, if aliens were to visit Earth, presum- presumably they would be rational creatures. That is, if they had a culture which they would, and they had scientific knowledge and technology as they would, that when the Martians or that whatever the aliens, whoever the aliens were, and, and, and the Earthlings, us, encountered each other, they would mutually recognize each other as rational creatures and therefore as persons. Uh, and if they did so, then they would um, instantly, according to Kant, also recognize that they owed each other certain duties. And that was to follow basically the second categorical imperative that persons are always to be treated as ends in themselves, which means essentially that they're to be respected and their rights are to be respected. So Kant would say that if the Martians and the humans came into contact, even though they had no prior conventions, they had no prior agreements, they would instantly recognize that they owed it to each other to treat each other with respect to treat each other with some sort of moral consideration. Harmon, of course, rejects Kant, so he can't see it that way, right? What what is his way of of imagining such an encounter? And he says here on page 57, there are other examples that confirm the same point. Consider judgments that we might make about Martians who felt no concern for us. That is, imagine the Martians just regarded us as of no account whatsoever. Suppose that these Martians would not be deterred from a given course of action simply by the reflection that that course of action would harm some human being. What is it, what if they didn't regard us as having any rights or being of any, having any moral status? These Martians would not treat such a consideration as any sort of reason that is within their conventions. There'd be no reason not to harm a human being. For them, the consideration would simply not tell against that course of action at all. In that case, we cannot say that it would be morally wrong of the Martians to harm us. That is, the Martians would be much like the cannibals or, in a, you know, the extreme case of Hitler in, in that they, they would have no reason not to harm us. And so we may regard them harming us as bad, but we couldn't say that an individual Martian was morally wrong if they harmed a human being because they would not have a reason not to. Uh, He acknowledges that um, Kant would see the thing entirely differently. I think as as I described it, um, but then his take on it is down here. Now a defender of Hume's tacit convention theory will assume plausibly that Kant is mistaken about the powers of pure practical reason. And that would be the, The powers of pure practical reason would be the the power of rationality, the power of recognizing mutually between the Martians and the humans that they were dealing with rational creatures and so that they had moral obligations to them. I I think that's all that means there, powers of pure practical reason. When we first come across the Martians, they may well have no reason to be concerned about us at all. And in that case, there are no moral constraints on them in their dealings with us. It doesn't mean that we can't defend ourselves um, or that we wouldn't regard their harming us as wrong. It just means that we can't hold them to the moral standards that we could if we were in a mutual convention with them. Right? And that's the sort of thing that he develops. He says, if, if they harm us, that is not a matter of morality or immorality, although well, may be a matter of war between the planets. If it turns out that there is no way for us to harm the Martians so that they do not need to be concerned about us, even for reasons of self-interest. 
than a morality that encompasses us and then may never develop. Uh, on the other hand, if a conflict develops, I'm going to appear at the top of the second column, that is in neither their interest nor ours, we and they may try to arrive at conventions that would reduce or eliminate this sort of conflict. That is, we could enter into, I mean, presumably the Martians are rational creatures, so it's possible to enter into a convention with them, right? That's something that Harmon has to, uh, has to have. The, the Martians need to be rational in, in the sense that they, they need to be the kind of creatures that can enter into self-interested conventions that are good from their point of view, right? For example, we and they might adopt a convention of respect for each other as rational beings that would involve, among other things, trying to avoid actions that would harm other rational beings. In that case, there would be a morality encompassing us and them. But the, the key is that it would have to be a result of a convention between us and them. It wouldn't exist naturally, uh, as Kant would, would have it. It would have to be the result of, of some kind of convention, which is, I find that really fascinating because I am a big Star Trek fan at least the old Star Trek and part, a big part of Star Trek is the interrelations between alien species. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a fascinating science fiction scenario. Uh, how, whether there would be a uh, mutual morality between alien species or whether uh, it would be more like what uh, Harmon says that, that any such, common morality would have to be the result of a convention that was made, an agreement that was made between, uh, between the species. Quite, quite fascinating. 